Sex is a battlefield. Animals will go to every extreme to mate and ensure their survival. Without sex, a species is history. Its genes a dead end. From violent couplings to sperm wars, to mating rituals, and finally, amazingly, to love. Sex drives evolution, and evolution drives sex. In nature, it really is all about sex. Just off the coast of Bimini Island in the Bahamas, scientists are studying a marvel of evolution. Over millions of years, evolution has built the protruding jaw and razor-sharp teeth of the ocean's master predator. But sharks are more than just killing machines. They are pioneers of sex. Half a billion years ago, sharks really invented what people would call sex. Sam Gruber has studied sharks for 45 years. People basically don't know much about sharks, and they think of them as the death fish from hell, but really they're highly, highly sophisticated, tremendous animals. In addition to complex navigation and communication systems, sharks were one of the first to develop a whole new way to have sex. It may not look like very much, but it represents a huge evolutionary leap in reproductive behavior. If you look very closely, you'll see these two little finger-like projections, which are called claspers, are actually the penis of the male shark. 400 million years ago, Sharks became one of the first vertebrates to evolve a penis. But they were hardly the last. Over millions of years, the penis proved so valuable that it evolved independently in animals as different as insects, birds, and reptiles. The penis is a good example of convergent evolution because it serves one purpose, but it's arisen in many different ways in a variety of organisms. But how did the penis become so vital? 700 million years ago, sharks, fish, and other vertebrates have yet to evolve. Sea life is instead comprised of simple, single-celled creatures. To pass on their genes, they don't have to partner up. They can reproduce by themselves. Reproduction before sex was all asexual. Asexual reproduction means that you just make copies of yourself and send them off into the environment. They have all of your genes and no one else's. Asexual reproduction does guarantee that 100% of an organism's genes are passed on. But on the evolutionary battlefield, this strategy has one serious flaw. When each and every creature shares the exact same genes, they also share the same genetic weak spots. Imagine that a virus shows up on the scene, and that virus attacks you if you have a very specific gene sequence in your DNA. Now, if everyone in your population has the same DNA, that means that that virus is going to wipe everyone out. But with sexual reproduction, the mixing and matching of genes increases the odds of at least some individuals living on. The secret to survival is sex. The first animals to adopt sexual reproduction emerged 600 million years ago. But the sex they practiced is not what humans might imagine. These passive creatures, relatives of modern coral, were tightly anchored to the sea floor. How can you mate when you can't move? Cast sperm and eggs on the waves and hope they meet. Each summer, billions of coral polyps simultaneously launch their reproductive cells into the current. Each coral releases both sperm and egg. But instead of combining with each other, 
they wait until they encounter the seeds of another coral. No one knows how they do it. This mass spawning is one of nature's most arresting spectacles. But it evolved as a matter of survival. Mass spawning by corals could be called a defense mechanism. Having all of the eggs and sperm released at the same time allows some of the offspring to survive even when there are predators around. You swamp the predators, you produce so many that they can't all be eaten by those predators at that point in time. For stationary animals, casting DNA into the ocean may have been the only way to sexually reproduce. But a new class of creatures was about to evolve, and sex would evolve with them. About 570 million years ago, in a very brief period of time, we see the origin of many different, often very complex body forms, some of which are still with us today. Many forms that resemble modern invertebrates, crustaceans, we even see the first fish. These early fish could move like no other creatures that came before. Instead of relying on ocean currents to carry their fate, males could directly target the female's eggs with their sperm. But even this method of mating had its pitfalls. The eggs, once fertilized, were not only tiny and fragile, they were exposed. This forced the parents to either stand guard or abandon them altogether. It would take another 200 million years for evolution to come up with a new plan, which is where sharks come in. In sharks, Evolution gave rise to an innovation that allowed males to deploy sperm directly inside the females. Sharks invented sex, so to speak. This is just a huge difference from what we see in the animals that lived a half a billion years ago. Instead of two fish just randomly spraying their eggs and sperms out into the water, helter-skelter, these animals have to actually come in contact Sharks are one of the first vertebrates to physically connect during sex. It may sound friendly, but with sharks, it's anything but. Cute guys, right? The male will bite her pectoral fin, her arm fin, and roll her over. Then the male has these two claspers, or peni, and one is rotated around while the other stays back, and that's inserted into the female's cloaca, which is the common duct. This vertical hold may look brutal, but biologically speaking, it's a thing of beauty. It looks to me like a ballet, because they have very difficult tasks to go through to bring themselves together. Each seemingly violent act has a necessary sexual function. The male flips the female shark to her back to relax her for penile insertion. He sinks his teeth into her skin to trigger her ovulation. She's even protected from his gashing. Female sharks have skin twice as thick as male sharks. They have amazing healing properties. They can have huge lacerations which would kill a human and they're perfectly fine with it. But the crucial innovation of shark sex is the penis. Once the male is firmly attached, a spur at the appendage's tip prevents it from slipping out. A sac in the male's abdomen fills with seawater and propels the sperm directly into the female's womb, where eggs await fertilization. So not only did they invent copulation, but they also invented getting pregnant. That is to say, internal fertilization. This represents a whole new stage in reproductive biology. Internal fertilization has been a foundation of sharks 400 million year reign as the ocean's top predators. Not only does it protect their developing eggs from enemies, it leads to the birth of large, fully formed pups that are literally born to kill. For hundreds of millions of years, animals would remain confined to the Earth's oceans. 370 million years ago, 
a unique lineage of fish began to move towards land. Called tetrapods, they evolved legs from fins. In time, those legs became sturdy enough to let them move out of the water. But this new world presented new problems. If you look around today, there are creatures that spend all their time on land. But to do that, you have to have a whole lot of tricks. You have to be able to lay eggs or give birth to live young. If you are laying eggs, your eggs have to be waterproof. The fish ancestors of tetrapods simply dropped sperm into the current to fertilize eggs. But that wouldn't work on land. So one group of tetrapods, the ancestor of reptiles and mammals, successfully changed their method of reproduction. As sharks had before them, reptiles developed internal fertilization. And then they went beyond, evolving an extraordinary adaptation to protect their young. The amniotic egg.